I recently reviewed the new 2025 Zephyrus G14 and it is an absolute beast. But I can't really review it in a vacuum because the 2024 model is very similar and a lot cheaper. So let's compare these two in full detail to see which one has the better value. And please like and subscribe if you like these type of videos. Starting off with the exterior, yeah, they're almost exactly the same. Both have the same full aluminum body and have pretty much identical dimensions. The 2025 model did become 2 millimeters thicker though and has this little bump on the bottom, which the 2024 model does not have. So the older model might look a little sleeker. This also means the 2025 G14 sits slightly higher off the table, but you don't really notice this in normal use. The new G14 also got a couple grams heavier, but again, this is barely noticeable. Other than that, from the outside, it basically stayed the exact same. But the 2025 model got quite the spec bump. It now has that newer AMD HX CPU and maxes out at an RTX 5080 instead of a 4070. That RTX 5080 also gets 30 more watts to work with than the old 4070, which should put it way above last year's model in terms of performance. And it has double the VRAM of last year's top spec, which is very handy for modern games since they're quite memory hungry. It now also comes with a minimum of 32 gigabytes of RAM, with even an option for 64 gigabytes of RAM, which is pretty damn cool. The port selection on the new G14 stayed pretty much the same. However, in the 2024 model, you could only charge it with a USB-C charger through its left USB-C port. Well, this year, you can finally charge through both the left and right ports, which is great. The included charger also got a little wattage bump, going from 180 watts to 200 watts. But its size and weight stayed basically identical, which is nice. Their keyboards are also pretty much identical. The keys feel the same as far as I can tell, which is a good thing, because the 2024 model had a great keyboard. ASUS says they made the keycaps of the newer model 12% larger, but I cannot really tell the difference. And their trackpads also look and feel the exact same. Now the 2024 G14 already had a pretty much perfect display. But I am slightly disappointed that they didn't change a single thing here either. I mean 120Hz is great and definitely smooth enough for me, but a 144Hz or even a 165Hz OLED display would have been a really cool upgrade. Maybe next year. That anti-reflective coating is also still the same, which is nice to see. Now I said in my full review that its hinge feels like it might be a bit tighter than last year. The new 2025 model does have slightly less wobble, but it's a tiny difference. Now, when this 2025 model was revealed at CES, ASUS said on their website that they increased the volume of it by 252%. And that is a pretty big claim. So let's listen what that sounds like. They sound the exact same. They also get just as loud. And they do get really loud. But the 2025 G14 does not get any louder than the 2024 model. I really don't know what ASUS could have meant by this, because these are literally the exact same speakers. I'm not complaining or anything. I mean, the Zephyrus G14 has basically the best speakers out of all Windows laptops I've tested, but it is a pretty odd thing to put on the website when there's basically no difference. It seems like the webcam and microphone stayed the same as well, which isn't necessarily bad. These are perfectly fine for video calls and the mic sounds quite good for a laptop. Just like the 2024 model, the 2025 G14 also supports G Helper. G Helper is basically just a lightweight, better version of Armory Crate with all the unnecessary stuff removed. Both laptops support CPU undervolting, which is great for if you want slightly lower temperatures or a bit longer battery life. And both also have the option for fully custom fan profiles and power limits. But that RTX 5080 naturally has a slightly higher power limit, so it can boost a little higher. So not much differences so far, right? But in terms of performance, 
stuff has definitely changed. In Cinebench R23, the 2025 G14 beats last year's Ryzen 9 8945HS hard. With 12 cores against 8 cores, it's a pretty damn nice performance uplift. And in 3D Mark Time Spy, you can really see that RTX 5080 stretches legs. It's definitely a generational leap in terms of performance. But benchmarks are just numbers. So let's see if there's an actual noticeable difference in some real games. Okay, I love you, man. Oh, okay. Kind of game. You want to fuck me, man? You want to fuck me, man? So that 2025 G14 is definitely a lot faster, but the performance uplift is a bit inconsistent between games, right? In graphically intensive games like Battlefield, Cyberpunk and Red Dead Redemption, the 2025 model is a lot faster than last year. Here we can really see that RTX 5080 doing hard work, especially in games that utilize DLSS. But in games that are more CPU heavy, like CS2 or Rust, we barely got any extra performance. So if you play mainly graphically intensive games, you will see a huge performance uplift with this new guy. But if you don't, well, tough shit. That extra VRAM is very handy for some people though. For example, AI workloads need that shit bad. And since modern games are all unoptimized messes now, that 16 gigabytes will last you a lot longer than eight. Now this new AMD chip is very efficient. So how does that affect battery life? Well, I tested their battery life in two scenarios, under light use and while gaming. Under light use, I played a YouTube video while doing nothing else with their displays at full brightness at 60 Hz with their power profiles on silent and in iGPU mode. The 2024 G14 lasted quite long at 9 hours and 47 minutes, but the 2025 model lasted more than an hour longer at 10 hours and 50 minutes. Very nice. Now in the gaming test, I used the same settings as before, but now with the power profile on performance. I guess the 2025 model did last a little longer than last year, but come on guys, at this point just buy a Nintendo Switch. So the 2025 G14 is definitely faster, but it also uses a lot more power. So does that create more noise and also higher temperatures? Well, no, it actually stays cooler than the 2024 G14. While gaming, the 2024 G14 CPU got up to 95 degrees and its GPU up to 85 degrees. But on the new 2025 model, the CPU did not go higher than 90 degrees and the GPU around 85 degrees. That's 5 degrees Celsius cooler on the 2025 CPU, which is very impressive considering that there's also an RTX 5080 in here. Their fan noise is about the same. Which means the thicker cooling solution does work, because that RTX 5080 is using more power, while the fans aren't making any more noise than on the 2024 G14. Unfortunately, both of them have the same lack of upgradability though. Fun fact, this year ASUS actually removed that third fan in the 2024 model, but added more beefy heat pipes to its cooling system, which apparently works great. Both the 2024 and the 2025 models have an upgradable M.2 SSD and Wi-Fi card, but neither one has upgradable RAM. However, the 2025 model now comes with a minimum of 32 gigabytes, so I don't think that should be an issue. What is an issue though, is pricing. 
Since the 2024 G14 has been out for a year, it can be found for some very nice prices. I've seen it go as low as 1400 or even 1200 bucks, but the 2025 G14 starts at 3000 bucks. And the model I'm using in this video with the RTX 5080 is 900 more than that at 3900 bucks. So there is literally a two grand difference between these two, which is mind bogglingly high. For that price, you could literally get last year's G14, as well as a top spec gaming PC that will outperform the 2025 G14. So now comes the big question, which one of these two is more worth it? Well, currently at these prices, the 2024 G14 obviously has better value. The only things that really changed on the 2025 model are that better CPU and GPU and uh, well, yeah, it's price. Other than that, these two laptops are almost identical. Don't get me wrong, that RTX 5080 is quite a bit faster than the 4070 in last year's model. And it is one of the fastest gaming laptops at its size. I mean, it's an absolute beast. With 16 gigabytes of VRAM, it offers something that basically no other device at this size can. Except for the 2023 Zephyr G14 with that RTX 4090, which is also faster than this RTX 5080 version. Oof. But a 10 to 20% performance uplift for 2000 bucks more is just a bit too much for me. However, there is also that way cheaper model with the RTX 5070 Ti. And I feel like that one would be a lot more worth it for the money. It should only be a little bit slower, but for 900 bucks less. So let's compare this RTX 5080 model with that 5070 Ti model in the next video. Maybe it'll have better value. Now let me give a huge shout out to my YouTube members. Soundwive, Thomas, Inky, Mr. Frosty Dude, Dropzone One, Martijn Snijkers, David Gill, Felix Nathan, and Flimsy. If you become a YouTube member, you get early access to content of mine, a shout out at the end of every video, and you also support me as a creator to make these videos. Oh, and of course, you'll also be part of the Cool Guys Club. So you can use cool gifts like these in the comment section. So if you're interested, please join. Now I will see you all in the next video. Bye bye. Batter up, dude. <laughs> Oh!